Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the best chess games I am Eric Rosen ever played. Now this was the Stafford Gambit by him and the opponent started off with e4 and e5 by Eric. Opponent plays knight f3. Eric goes with knight f6 uh, starting off the Gambit. You are just trying to Gambit the center pawn and then trying to make sure that uh, you can take advantage of the open center from your side. Opponent takes the pawn and now knight f knight to c6 by Eric, giving away the knight as well. And most likely the opponent will take here because proceeding with knight backwards doesn't make sense once you have already advanced it earlier and took on the free pawn. You want to hang out to that extra pawn advantage. That's why it takes knight takes knight and uh, Eric takes back with the pawn. Now here uh, knight comes out on c3 trying to defend the pawn and hang on to the advantage of the extra pawn and yet, as you see in the engine evaluation as well white is already ahead by 1.8 because the center pawn is not there there's no central con uh, square control for uh, black right now but here's where uh, the game starts to improve uh, for eric now bishop to c5 to begin with uh, trying to attack the f2 pawn straight away and now no matter what move you play the the advantage will keep shifting towards black. Uh, the only move that is the best in this situation is queen e2, which is tough to find. And any other move that you try, say bishop over to c4, you suddenly see the engine evaluation has changed to 0.7 in favor of black. Why so? Because now knight hops in onto g4 and the pawn on f2 will be pressurized. To be noticed, if this happens, an opponent decides to sell castle, uh, this is already bad because queen is going to come onto h4 and once you defend this, you can sacrifice your knight because you have three attackers there and after rook takes, you can take back and suddenly you are piece up. Uh, and this is completely winning position, I would say. Open can uh, You can just castle and get your rook centralized, uh, do the rook lift and that would be over anytime soon. You can release the pressure of the bishop as well by placing a bishop, castling queen side. Either way, this would be winning for sure. Uh, let's go back in the game where after uh, my, the opponent actually he played a uh, bishop to e2, trying to make sure that he can cast on the king side. And what Eric does is play h5. Now h5 looks passive, but the attack is on. The h5 is al also placed because you want to play knight g4 so that knight is guarded with the pawn as well as the bishop. Because if you just play knight g4 straight away, opponent has two attackers and uh, there will be no h5 played, so you will lose the knight. So that's why h5 played here, opponent castles, and then Eric goes for knight g4. Now knight g4, as I explained, is pretty solid uh, and attacking a couple of squares which are critical to be handled right now. And here the opponent goes for king the knight away by placing h3. Now guess what the next move is? You can hang on the knight because queen d4 is the stronger move. After pawn takes, uh, the game is completely in black's favor because you have opened up the file as well for the attack. You are okay losing uh, your uh, knight as well. So you are pawn down, you are a minor piece down, but you are in advantage thanks to the nice development. The dark square bishop feels trapped for himself. The rook is of no use. Even the queen is not getting out. And here, if you see, three uh, pieces are lined up, uh, attacking already. The fourth one as well, ready to come into the picture. So here, uh, it looks pretty good already for black. If, say, bishop takes pawn, you don't need to capture the bishop backwards. Uh, you can just simply place your queen onto e5. And it's a strong move because you are threatening checkmate again. And if you want to defend this, you would have to give the bishop backwards. And after rook takes, again, you will have to maybe play spawn forward or try to uh, give away uh, the queen as well eventually. And uh, don't try and play g3 here because that's losing already. Because after queen takes, that's checkmate thanks to this beautiful bishop pinning the pawn on f2. So this is completely devastating for the opponent if you try to ever do that. Uh, so instead, uh, in the game, open doesn't take. Oh, he does take. He does take. Okay. And uh, Eric takes back. Here, Bishop takes uh, on g4. And now Queen e5. A very solid move. 
just trying to uh, checkmate the opponent. Opponent finds the way out, uh, just trying to make sure that the king has an escape square eventually. Eric still goes with the check. Opponent moves and another check. Our king now is now uh, in the open and now bishop takes bishop, hitting uh, the king. Now, if king comes here, you have a wonderful move, which is castling on the queen side, which hits the uh, king with a check. And now your position is suddenly improved as well. You can defend, of course, uh, your queen and the bishop both by placing your queen on to h5. Everything is defended. You are preparing to give a check as well. Uh, and you can even give get back a bishop hitting the, queen, uh, the king or you can just take the queen. Everything is hanging. It's 9.3 in favor of black already. Uh, so uh, the opponent instead plays pawn to f3 and that loses uh, g2 instead. And then king moves on to d3. Here Eric takes the pawn uh, and then knight comes in between so that the queen is defended. And after that move, rook comes on to h3, uh, preparing to give a discovered check to the king. So king moves on to c4. And now uh, Eric takes the knight first. Opponent takes back with the rook. And then pawn forward, b5. Uh, losing the bishop doesn't care about the bishop because all you're trying to do is control the ranks and the files so that you are able to checkmate your opponent quickly. Now opponent takes the bishop and Eric gives a check with queen g5. And now pawn forward, uh, which was uh, e5 here by uh, the opponent. Eric plays queen e6 trying to maybe pull the king further down. And if he takes, of course, you are going to give another check. And then eventually, uh, this would end up in a quick checkmate after maybe rook as well can come down. You can lose another rook. doesn't matter because uh, after takes, here is a checkmate coming and that cannot be saved. So uh, it is going to be checkmate once the opponent has moved here. But uh, there was wonderful ideas there by Eric. After king goes to d4, now you can checkmate with, of course, queen uh, to b4. And then after pawn forward, you can just take it. And that's a checkmate because this is already controlled. The last, the third rank is controlled by rook eventually uh, from beginning. And this is now controlled by queen as well. So that would have been a checkmate. But Eric had a uh, thing in mind to uh, checkmate while he castles queen side. So instead, he plays f5, which is an interesting move because if n passant, what happens is you castle queen side and that's checkmate. And that's what happens in the game. A checkmate uh, where opponent had more pieces on the board, uh, where opponent had a better pawn structure, but opponent's king was in the center trapped uh, with queen side castle, the final move in the game. So a beautiful checkmate by Eric Rosen. The gambit worked like anything. And I'm even wondering why am I not trying this gambit so often? So I would love to post more content on Stafford Gambit, learn this more from Eric, and then improve my game as well. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting content again. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.